to our next deck here. Uh, more Zoe. So this is, again, just basically... I basically built all of these Zoe decks as elusive aggro decks. I do think that Zoe is just a sweet card that generates card advantage as well with super cool star chart. And someone else mentioned Zoe Karma earlier. And I do think that a more mid-range or controlling variation of Zoe decks where she just like is a card that generates value for you could be reasonable but i really like playing cheap elusive creature decks so that's why i've built most of these here so in addition to zoe we have fizz in this build who's very very good at protecting himself and gives himself elusive whenever you cast a spell at the top end of our curve we've got kind of the top end we've got wiggly bubblefish here as a cheap elusive or an expensive elusive that makes itself cheaper as we play out a bunch of spells because we have a bunch of X ones in this deck and Go Hard is a metagame deck in this format, I've got Bastion to protect our threats here. I've got Pocket Aces to protect our cards here. I've got some Sun Blessed Vigor to protect our cards here. I've got some Mentor of the Stones as well. I've also got other elusive threats like Zap and Lunari Shadestalker. So let's go ahead and dive on into some games with this and uh, see how it feels tonight. Eve to Eve, dig YZ. Don't stay up too late. Any luck with Zoe? Yeah, so far, so far we're two for two on Zoe decks that have felt reasonable. And Zoe as a card honestly feels better than I was expecting her to. Speaking, speaking of more controlling Zoe decks, here's Zoe Heimendinger on the other side. I think we're full mulliganing here, looking for cheap cards to start our curve. Opponent is likely a controlling variation, so we want to be the beatdown here. This is not, not the droids we're looking for here. This card is not amazing in the control matchup, but it's a threat. So go, 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 Gadget Sparklefly. Do I pocket aces just to... I think I pocket aces just so I don't waste mana this turn. Because then we bank a mana, I get to play Zap as uh, four cost next turn, and then go up to two, and then I have Pale Cascade available also. Yeah, all, all three of the champions in this card drop look playable, and they look playable in multiple shells, which is sweet. They could hush us here and eat one of our things, but I think that's fine. Pale Cascade also works. Sure, Zoe technically makes spells for Lee Sin too. That's a good observation. A lot of their removal is damage based, so there is some value in proactively bumping this up. So I think I think I'm gonna go ahead and sunblast figure here, and then just shade stalker with my nightfall. It's Fizz! Let me at him. So I think my plan here is like Pale Cascade this proactively, which reduces this to a two, and then play Wiggly Bubblefish. And then I have two left up to Pale Cascade something still. That 
That's really unfortunate. Give them an elusive turret, too. Let's do this. Could ye be warned, the Heimer? Yeah, I guess that's true. Oh, come on, come on. I don't even know if this is good, though. Like, their, bo their board is pretty full, and they've already generated a bunch of turrets. Like... There's a chance this play is bad. I guess it draws me a card, which is nice. I do I do have Salvage and Bastion here, so like I have a little bit of, little bit of back and forth interaction at least. Please try to murder one of my things. Well? Yeah, stealing it doesn't really accomplish anything, right? So I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to jump block this turn. Yeah, Zoe Zoe is a cheap way to enable elusive for give it all seems great. This archetype played give it all previously, but usually it doesn't have a cheap elusive enabler for it. No, give it all is grant, I'm pretty sure, right? Grant all allies keywords, yeah. Definitely did that. That's it. Had too many blockers. We went we went appropriately wide for a couple of elusive blockers, but they also went tall. Yeah, I think the I think the turn I killed Heimer was probably wrong. I guess I guess it wouldn't have mattered, right? Because they all would have had the same stat line. Heimer wouldn't give them bots. I don't think I don't think that actually mattered. I mean, to be fair, Quack, most of the decks we played against tonight are upgrades to established decks beforehand, so there's some neat new tricks in them, but like, the opponent's archetype was still a thing before. One of the great things about Rune Terra is that like, it's been always, it's been varied for a long time now. The patch adds some new tools to things, but you're largely just expanding on the already pretty diverse field. All right, chat, they're coming for our one drops. Hide your, hide your one drops. I'm gonna get a Nibbler for that. Alright, don't Thermo beat me. Uh, 
That's the one thing I explicitly asked you not to do, opponent. Maybe I'm supposed to lead on... Nah, Fizz is probably better than Zoe here long term. Uh, refresh your stream. Anybody else having issues with the deck tracker? I feel like somebody would have said something earlier. I guess I had to log back into... Yeah, deck tracker is working fine here. Refresh your stream. Usually, usually someone would have said something. So, if they have Thermo Beam here, they could technically beam Fizz post combat. But I definitely want to get my hits in here and race. Going back up to 20 is also pretty valuable here. Perfect. Zoe sounds lovely. Playing playing spells proactively works w w wiggly burble fish down as well. Look how sparkly! Very rude of you, opponent. Don't tell my Zoe to get flocked. So we'll bank some spell mana here. Salvage to start. Trigger this. Huh? I think I'm into that. Looking into the future, I, see... I still have Spell Thief here to protect uh, protect Fizz. I guess this is bad because I like could Mystic Shot this. They just Thermo Beamed my Sparkle Fly. Yes. Resolves. Legal play, yep. Time for the main event. Great wiggly biggly. Great wiggly biggly. Coming right up. Kind of surprised they didn't axe here. They would have. He would have leveled if they would have axed. Okay, so they should be like super dead then, right? So I get to play this, I get to gem this, I get to play two Wiggly Bigglies for free, and then I get to hold up Spell Thief to protect Fizz. Actually, we probably just gem the Fizz, right? Stalking Shadows Bubble Fish sounds, sounds fun. So the, the problem with Stalking Shadows Bubble Fish, though, is that, um... The problem with stalking shadows bubble fish is that you um, you need a lot of units to play stalking shadows. 
I need a lot of spells to play bubble fish. It's Fizz! Look how cute it is! Look at that chat! My deck full of tiny things beat the deck that wanted to murder all of my tiny things. It's so exciting, and I just can't hide it. Do 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 Ribbon Tarek, eh? We just got done playing, got done playing Zoe Timo. I agree, it felt very reasonable. I mean, I think I basically never want Bubblefish in the opener. I have not played with the the foil cards yet, no. Raise your weapon, Sunwood. <sighs> We're gonna take a pretty big hit this turn. Messenger's actually pretty appealing, huh? Because it just, like, blocks, it just, like, trades and replaces itself. Yeah, like, I feel, I feel like I, I, we can't just race at the moment. I think, I think trading with their 3 is good here. I think I'm playing this to give Fizz evasive. We're getting close to double, double cheap wiggly wiggly again. Pick up. Did they reforged three times already. Do I need Fizz to win next turn? I don't think I do, right? I guess Fizz is like strictly better than this. Oh, come on, come on. I'm pretty, pretty sure I don't want to leave myself dead to like a deal two or a deal three. There's a chance they're not playing those cards, but I don't think it's worth the risk here.
And I still have, uh... I'm still gonna have mana to play another spell to protect Fizz here, which is nice. Oh, I, I don't, actually. This is slow. I'm dumb. No, I'll have, uh, I'll have the burst spell from this, right? Damn it. Damn it. I wanted a burst spell, work Wiggly Biggly. Damn it, Bobby! Touch little fizz now, don't say a word. Well, well poop. Oh, she was ready to level. Oh, I forgot to check her. Crap! What a punt! We'd have had lethal from her extra point of power if I would have parlayed pre-combat. We would have we would have had lethal I just like like during spoiler season I got in my head that this card wasn't gonna be levelable and she's been so easy to level in these games, it's been kind of unreal. Yeah. Even a fragment I won't look back. thanks for the follow. I appreciate that. Welcome to the channel. I feel like if that command exists, it just auto-times out from the mod bot. That is correct! The punt command does just auto-time you out. Taric leveled up! That's a Padlin. They are they are targeting. We could see a Bastion here. There's a good chance their Taric deck runs Bastion. To the person who said does it really, I want you to know that I appreciate you had the gumption to test it out. That's a paddling. Zach Zasquatch, thanks for the follow. Hi Yama. All right, so if I would have if I would have been paying more attention to Zoe's level up, we would have killed them last turn. But it looks like we're gonna have lethal here, assuming no burn. Wins again. The uh the three one for six has been fun. The uh the one that gets the one that gets free as you uh, as you play more spells. One's been super reasonable so far. We've also been really good at drawing two of them at the same time though, which certainly makes them feel better. What's the best Zoe deck? Anybody that tells you they currently know what the best Zoe deck is is either lying to you or they're an idiot. And either way, you should probably take what they're saying with a grain of salt. All, all three of the Zoe variations we've played today have felt reasonable and have merit towards working on them, I think. There's no, there's no substitute 
for hard work in card games. You need to unite is not possible that they're genius now. I will say this. Zoe Zoe has the highest concede rate of any other champion I've played. I think I've enjoyed the Starlit Seer variation the most so far, but we don't have many games with this Bilgewater one yet. Currently, currently, my highlight for tomorrow is going to be the Freljord build. It's got a lot of tricks in it. I like this build. This build feels reasonable so far, too, though. Uh, Starlet's here was the first build we played tonight. This is our, this is our third Zoe deck of the evening. And I promise when I'm live tomorrow morning, we're going to play some non-Zoe decks. What do we have at the top of the queue? We've got Mushroom Mine and Quinn Riven Scouts at the top of the queue for tomorrow morning. This is probably Overwhelm Aggro. And honestly, like honestly, Sparkle Fly and Dementor of the Stone sounds great here. I'll be happy to get that bumped up Triple D. That's a good note, by the way, for people that have been watching and you have channel points accrued. If you see decks in the deck queue you would like to see played sooner, you can cash some of those channel points in to bump things up in the queue, which moves them up in points so they get played sooner on stream. I'm planning to play four decks tomorrow morning and Friday morning, and then three decks most other days this week. Maybe, maybe four, depending on what viewer metrics look like. Don't avalanche me. Fuck. Maybe I, maybe I should have just pocket aces here. Are they are they not the aggro deck then? Do some of the overwhelm variations play avalanche? Yeah, I'll get that I'll get that bumped up at the end of the stream today, Danich. I don't I don't update those live. Or mid midstream, I should say. How do I feel about getting aggressive here? I'm kind of into it. The uh, the non-pale cascade buffs here are permanent, so even if they have like a flash freeze or something to stall this for the turn, it's going to keep most of this, which is fine. When this dies, I'm going to go up to nine cards in hand, so I'll still get to draw a card next turn. We're hoping to fade Sajani here, because Sajani can make this vulnerable. You own what you take. Think I'm just zapping. Go with the flow. Wait and see what they do. Safeguard our homes. Oh, they're just pulling that out of the way to push damage. Yeah, that's great. I think I heal this back to full so the kill target damage thing doesn't work on it, and then we just try and kill them next turn. Wow, for fuck's sake. 
That's such a beating. Yeah, I don't think we can beat that one. We were pretty, pretty all in on that. All in on that one. The, uh, I think you could probably draw my mistake that game back to the turn three when I played into the Avalanche. I should, if I would have kept Sparkle Fly in play that game and would have just played my Pocket Aces that turn instead of play, trying to play out the plus two, plus two support card, I think we would have been much better off. We would have been able to gain some life and keep that initial threat going. We Mulligan Fizz looking for more things like Goat here to block early against this deck. Also, Mulliganing for Sparklefly is really good. Sparklefly is one of our better ways to race the aggro. Oh, hey, what's that? We're going to play Goat pre-combat next turn. Opponent's archetype doesn't usually play a lot of deal ones as the fearsome deck, so... Now we're not playing it pre-combat because we're not attacking this into here. We want to save these to block fearsomes. Hey, thanks for the 17 months, Kane. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Uh, so this is really bad timing on my opponent's part here. That card is a burst speed card and my opponent's not about to burn any mana, so they should definitely wait till their next turn to play that. That burst speed card could be a nightfall enabler for them. It also lets them draw a card before they make a decision. Jump in, jump in the gun there a little bit on that one. They led on the ephemeral one. Interesting choice. I'm going to go ahead and trade this one here just so I don't want to take too much damage without a Sparkle Fish in sight. This also gives me a gem for Zoe, which is great. Uh, Fre Freljord was the first Zoe deck we played tonight. I guess I should technically lead on Star Chart here. Mm, yeah, if I led on Star Chart, I could have grabbed the, the, uh, this one here. I think I actually want Crescent Strike. I have... Um, I have a lot of... I have a lot of units to play out with my mana, and this stunning two things would definitely buy us a turn to win the game. Do y'all still see me? Is my client hung, or did I disconnect? OBS does not appear to say it's disconnected. Uh-oh. Client's dead, I'm here. Thanks everybody for hanging out tonight. Good evening. If you're a new viewer, welcome to the channel. Get the get the client reloaded here right quick. Hopefully pop back in. It's not something that happens terribly frequently. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, my client's not reloading chat. We poke it again. Hashtag too fat to, uh yep, that's that's the username. Any tips on deck building? Yes, if you have to My my number one piece of advice and I know this advice sounds a little harsh, but I promise you it's good advice. If you have to ask the question, how should I approach deck building? That probably means you shouldn't be building your own decks yet. The best way to get better at deck building is by looking at decks that other people have built and figuring out why they are good and then going, going from there. Play, play decks that are established decks 
and ask yourself why the person that worked on this established deck previously made some of the decisions that they made to get where they are. Yeah, start start by taking an established deck and making tweaks to it. Purple, purple fishy and gems have been sweet. I agree. Come home with me. This is a very good draw. Very, very, very good in the aggro matchup chat. Pretty sure we're gonna go double double pale cascade this free burble fish. Five, nine, twelve elusive here. Mystical levitation requires concentration. Oh, I mean, to be fair, I'll tell you to net deck in every card game. The people, the people that say, the people that put forward the idea that net decking is something you shouldn't do are idiots. They're idiots and they're bad deck builders. Here's, here's the brutal advice. Here's, here's the, some brutal reality chat. If you're good at deck building, your decks will become net decks. If you've, if you've never built a deck that's become a net deck, you're a shitty deck builder. And that's okay. We all start somewhere. All good deck builders start as crappy deck builders, but if your if your decks are your brews are good, they will become net decks. They'll become worth playing. Beneficial to forgive the number one piece of advice. When it comes to making changes to decks, it's the same as when I ask people to offer changes here. Identify a problem that the deck that you're playing has, and then try and come up with solutions to that problem. That is the best way to approach deck building, in my opinion. Looking into the future, I see purple. Purple? Mm, we're gonna die to an atrocity. Does being a good deck builder make you a good player? Not necessarily. But here's here's the here's the other flip side of that too. If you are a good deck builder, you're gonna know good players almost assuredly. So there are, there are plenty of instances of people who are good deck builders that consistently decks they design do well in in the hands of other tournament players. There's nothing I can do here to play around atrocity, right? We're just gonna open attacks and try and kill them. Epic Game Store is offering a free AAA game every day between now and the end of the year. That's sick. Yep. And there was just there's just no way to play around that, right? Not not for the position I was in. Perhaps I could have I could have played around that. I could have played around that on the previous turn, right? Like perhaps I'm supposed to block. Like if I if I would have blocked with Zoe. If I would have blocked with Zoe the previous turn and thrown her away to gain four life, I still I still would have had lethal the next turn. So perhaps I made a mistake with my blocks the turn prior because I still would have had lethal. Although I suppose if that's the case, they would just be atrocitying one of my units, which means I then still don't kill them. So the game's just different. D 
D2K Dragon. Thank you for the entire year of support. Let's get you a sword to go with that shield. Thanks for keeping me around. I think we basically always mulligan Burble Fish in the opener. But it's playing Vi Victor. Okay, with Targon. Right on time, Pocket Aces. Welcome to the party. Look out, Barkley! Meh. Scale of one to dead, where's my Zoe at here? Wow, they have both connected. That's so good for us. Every time the goat makes more than more than one gem, it feels like cheating chat. It's like this just this just shouldn't be legal. Make them choose who they want to kill here with their hush. Slash Pale Cascade. And I have backup Zoe. And we have another Mountain Goat here. So these, oh, I guess these trade now because of the hush. Yeah, that's fair. So we've got a bunch of cards in hand, but three of them are gems, which is good for Burberry Fish. Not great in terms of card quality, though. Humanity is obsolete. See, that attack would be really bold into my pick a card deck. Like they've seen they've seen pick Oh god! Oh it's another burbling fish chat! <laughs> I can't decide if I like this deck or the Freljord version better. This one, this and the Freljord build have both been good. Qu quality storm count. Agreed. This levels fizz too. Fizz fizz levels at the same time the burble fishes hit zero, which is just delicious. Oh, you got it. Ignite me, Danny.
Not quite lethal, but close. And again, like, this is our second Zoe. The first Zoe died this game. Like, she's already at 5 out of 10 differently named cards played. She, she generates cheap burst things for Fizz here, too, which is great. Make this Dorko vulnerable. Fizz. What are outs here? I don't know. this Zoe seen a star chart played yet, right? I wish there was a way I could see what she has. What she's, what she's seen played already. We're probably just supposed to open attacks there, though, because we have double Bastion in hand. <laughs> no, no worries, Vlad. It's okay. It was fun. We got through the thing a couple of times. Salvage. Salvage feels a little on the expensive side so far in the games that we've played. I just want some copies of Hush. Another another question is if we're if we're aggressive, like do I want this instead of Hush? Like is this is this possibly just better better than Hush in our aggro deck? One of the five mana is a lot. Maybe it's like double Moonlight Affliction is like this card is really good. Yeah, we have a, we have a lot of a lot of gem enablers. Something something that's worth considering is that um, right now Zap is pretty likely to draw us a plus two attack card. So like keeping keeping down. I'm going to try a couple of Moonlight Affliction and see if they end up being used. So I'm going to leave one cell. I'm going to split these. Being able, being able to sneak past their couple of elusive blockers also seems okay. Full mulligan here, looking for... Yeah, yeah, speaking, speaking of, feel the rush. Yeah, 
So, almost assuredly an Avalanche deck, potentially a Field of Rush deck on the other side of the board here. Alright, there's a Moonlight Affliction. So, this play would imply that they don't have Avalanche rolled up right now, right? I think, I think this play means I jam, I jam the Mentor. I think I get this charged up. So that way, I'm a little bit better at racing here. Keeping keeping my life total high has value. So again, Zoe can make a second star chart. She makes your existing one cheaper when she hits and you already have one. Bass, thanks for the follow. Welcome to the channel. Nine total cards here. Reduce the cost of a random card in each player's hand to zero this round. I, honestly, with Moonlight Affliction, I feel I feel like we're in I feel like we're in an okay spot here. I mean, are they really playing with fire? Gets the ones out of our hand, too. Looking to dodge Hush here. How much that deck cost? Seven plus. A lot, I would bet. I would put money on a lot. Crescent. Crescent Strike off a super cool start chart. It's been real, real good. This has easily been the card I've wanted to draw the most. In our, in our tempo decks. Yeah. Get out here. Well. Well, they're a coin flip to have a free Orient Sol next turn.
The old zero mana gain 10. Oh, wait, no, they pay banner for that, right? So this is the, so this card is free. The ice pillar is free, they misordered. Got it. So this is five, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. That's just a cheap card that... Oh, this... This lets me silence this? How's it going? So this is 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. I'm currently one point short of lethal. All right, does that math work out? I think that math works out. Is that lethal if they have nothing? Nine, uh, 15, 17, 18, 19. I'm one over. Playing with Zoe today has given me a whole... Like, I already had a lot of appreciation for Riot's balance team on Runeterra, but, but playing with Zoe today has given me an entirely new appreciation for them because, like... Like, they very clearly knew what they were doing when they stapled 10 onto Zoe. Like they, like that, that number is, yeah, it's, 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 it's just like one of those constant good reminders that there just isn't a substitute for hard work, practice, and experience in card games. There's just so many variables. You can't skip over the details and like go right to the answer. You need to like actually get, you need to, you need to actually get repetitions in. I, I did not think she would be bad. I thought she would just be like this sweet value engine that we would make evasive on occasion and be okay. But like, she's like, I was way off on how, how often she was going to level. I think this is usually a control deck. I think I'm actually going to keep all of these thinking they're a control deck. There's usually cornea control. Are there, are there older variations of this? The cornea control that were these, these regions and mono elise? All, all three of the champions in this set seem like they are competitive, reasonable cards, which is honestly just awesome. This this card with Wiggly Burble Fish has been absurd too.
feels a little bit bad losing our life steal, but Bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see how it pays off for him here. This is Fizz. Have you met? dies refill your spell mana huh so i think i actually don't attack with mentor here because i don't want to give them free mana i'm gonna double gem this and smack them for six Hordeberg, thanks for the follow. Welcome to the channel. Looking into the future, I see purple. Okay. Yeah, they could be they could be a combo go hard deck. A lot of lot of card draw. I am superior life form. They might kill with Playful Trickster here, even if they have interaction. Peak and Fern, thank you for the 34 months. I really appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for thanks for keeping me around. All right, so. Wow, that's really good. Really slick play here from the opponent. A to the spider God. So the problem, the problem with trying to save a mentor there. Oh, goat plus shakedown beats them. Yeah, you're right. It does. Um, the problem with trying to save a mentor there is if they have, um, if they have another. If they have a way to kill it, then I don't get my rally. Sweet. 
All right, so I want to go ahead and wrap up for the night. I've been live for over four hours. Usually I only do about three, but I was excited to get to the new set. I will be back uh, tomorrow morning, approximately 10 hours from now. I will be live again with more Rune Terra. I'm going to be playing four different decks that will be non-Zoe decks tomorrow morning. I'm going to update. I'm going to update the queue and see what we have in there. To wrap on this one, though, uh, I, I honestly, I don't know if I preferred this build or the Freljord build more. I preferred both of those those two builds to the PNZ build that we played in the middle. And one of the things that stands out in my mind that these two builds were doing that the PNZ build wasn't doing that maybe this would improve the PNZ build was both the builds we played that I liked had Mentor of the Stones in it. And this card was super impressive. Um, not only is it just good with our elusives in general, but especially with Sparklefly, it was really, really sweet. Um, just the aggro decks have such an impossible time racing this card getting bigger. Um, other, other thoughts on what we're doing here. Biggly Fish was so great with our gem producers and other cheap spells. That was just fantastic. I haven't caught the stream much because my beautiful wife landed me a PS5, but I'm happy to support the new content and hype for new cards. Super hype for Riven decks. Thank you for the 16 months, Dr. Mr. Pony. I really appreciate the tier three. Hope your hope life is treating you well. Hope you're enjoying your PS5. A ton of great games on there. So thoughts on slots in this deck that I'm not 100% certain on that I would try other things in. Moonlight Affliction, Salvage for Bastion. So I don't know that these three slots should be these cards at all. I think there's a chance that four Bastion is just too, too many, too many Bastion. So other things that I might try. Uh, Sunbless Vigor was very reasonable at multiple points. I could see going up to a third copy of that. Um, Guiding Touch is a, just a cheap card that draws a card that has different utility, especially with our units that we're making bigger. I could see Guiding Touch being a card we want to slot in just to drag the curve down a little bit. Yes, I will put this deck up on Mobilytics. I am signing off for the night, but all of these are going to end up on uh, my Stream Archives YouTube channel. I'm going to highlight one of them on the highlights video tomorrow, tomorrow morning on the highlights channel. So if you're new, make sure you check out my YouTube channel as well. I have one that only posts Rune Terra highlights every single day, and then I have another one that archives all of my stream stuff that gets everything gets cut up there on full. Thanks for reading for now. It was awesome. We had over 400 people here all night, which is great for an evening stream here, especially I mostly stream during the day. So hopefully see some of you back again tomorrow we have not we played three different zoe decks tonight because this card i can confirm that this card is everything i want to be doing in rune tier this is my new this is probably my new favorite champion she's really she's really great really great better better than i was expecting honestly she leveled up lots lots and lots and lots and lots and lots all right see you all in the morning everybody uh enjoy the rest of your evening or morning or whatever time of day it is wherever you're at in the world